welcome back to another video. So I have my Derwin Intense and Botanicum by Maria Trolle. And today we are going to color with the Derwin Intense in this Maria Trolle coloring book. I just got done filming a video where I showed you a whole bunch of tips and techniques that you can use with the Derwin Intense how to activate them, how to blend them, how to do some color mixing, and all kinds of really cool techniques. If you haven't seen that video, I'll make sure that's linked in the upper right hand corner. I did say in that video, I was gonna show you the layering technique with the Derwent Ink Tents in a coloring book because it's much easier to show in a coloring book. I showed it a little bit in that video on a leaf that I drew out, but it was just a really quick demonstration. And I know that we all love to see the coloring in a coloring book. So that's what we're gonna do here here today. If you check the description box down below, you'll find everything you see in this video, as well as a link for my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like more information on that, all you have to do is click the join button down below. So I chose a page in here, and I decided that I was just gonna color this adorable little frog here on this page. And the whole page sort of looks like a really quick color, so I don't know, after I color the frog, I may decide to just complete it. When you're using the Derwent Ink Tents in a coloring book or on a coloring page, it tends to go by a lot faster rather than just using colored pencils. If you've watched my previous video or if you've used the Derwent Ink Tents pencils before, you know that once you activate them, they just get so bright and vibrant and beautiful. And I have done videos here on my channel before where I show you how to do Derwent Ink Tents. So I will have all of those linked in a playlist. I also have a full color along where I use the Derwent Ink Tents in part of it. And I will make sure that all of the videos that will be helpful to you will be linked in the upper right hand corner. But today we're gonna work on this adorable little frog here. I thought he was so cute. And I think he'll be fun to do with the Derwent Ink Tents. I've already chosen my colors and I really want to be able to demonstrate the layering technique that I love using so much when I use these pencils. So I chose my colors and I also have another color here set off to the side because that is the color that I want to come back with to add a little bit extra depth possibly. So we'll see what happens. But for now I have leaf green, fern, and mustard. And as always I did test out some of these colors together to see which ones worked best best and I believe this right here is the color combination that we're going to be using and then this over here I think it's the leaf green with the oak I think the leaf green is our darkest one yeah this is what the leaf green looks like once it's activated so this is the leaf green with this oak color here that I have set off to the side that I don't know if I'm gonna bring in yet, but this is the three colors that I already did test and that's how they look together. Always make sure you test your colors, whether you're using colored pencils or you're using Derwin ink tents or whatever medium you're using, always make sure you test your colors out before you bring them to your coloring page because you want to know that they're gonna look nice once they all come together. So I think I chose the right colors. We'll have to see what happens when this adorable little frog is finished. So with the Derwin ink tents, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to lay down your colors. And this is my mustard. So I'm going to lay this only in the places where I want a little bit of a pop or a highlight. And this color, once it's activated, it does look brighter than this. And I'm just really using this color just to add a little bit of a contrast as well. So now I'm gonna come back with my fern and I'm going to lay this color down and just sort of blend it into that other color. I do sort of want a blend of some of these colors. So you'll notice that some of the colors are going to be blended into others. And if you watched my last video, you will see that these pencils are so fun to blend with because you can actually create a whole nother color. And in some of these places, I am gonna come back with my ink tents and I'm gonna lay the color right over some of these other colors. Over here under his belly, I would assume that it would be darker, so I'm just going to lay more of that color down under there. And I'm just gonna move this right into his leg and then down here onto his little feet. Okay, and then down under here, I would assume a whole lot of light's not getting in here, so I'm just going to lay a lot of that color down there. And you could see that I'm just laying these colors right next to each other, which really at this point doesn't matter. I do it a little bit differently. When I'm using my colored pencils, I would probably not come in here and lay these colors right next to one another because I want to show the separate sections. But I tend to use the ink tents 
just a little bit different and I like to blend the colors in with one another and then come back and layer one color over another because once this dries it is permanent so you could always come back with another color and it really helps by adding a darker color to create a whole lot of extra added depth. So now I have the leaf green and this one is rather dark so I'm just going to add a little bit of this in the areas where I want to create a shadow and you can see that I am definitely going right over where I laid that other color. And then all in here where he has his little foot laying over, I want this a little bit darker in here, so I'm gonna go all around his little toes. <laughs> Is that what they call them on frogs too, toes? <laughs> Who knows? And then this area under here, I would assume that it is much darker, so I'm gonna go all around his feet here. And then up here, right where this line for his mouth is, I'm going to add more of that color in there just to sort of outline it a little bit and pull this color down into my mid-tone. And then I'm going to come right around here just because I want to emphasize this area here. And if y'all have seen me color before, you know I like to do that just to add a little bit of depth. And then here where his eye is here to the back, I would assume that's going to be quite a bit darker. Okay, so right around his eye. Now I do have this pencil a little bit sharper because I'm going around these small areas here and I'm making sure that I go in a circular motion and pull the color down a bit and over here I want it quite a bit darker just to show that his little leg here is laying over and then down in here where his leg is meeting his body and then over here where we've got that flower and then down into here as well and you can see that I'm just adding this color in all the places where I want extra depth and dimension and I'm just layering these colors over one another and I'm just going through and adding this color everywhere where I think this little frog just needs a little bit of extra added depth. I have my Derwent water brushes and I'll show you what they look like. I cannot find my thinner one. This is three and this is two, but there is a one as well that has a much smaller brush and I couldn't find it anywhere. I may not be using this one because I think it's too thick for this. So I did grab a much smaller paintbrush so that I could get into the tighter areas where I just want to spread out some of the color. And I do also have my Tombow water brush because I want to show you a little bit how that works. I've never actually showed it in a video before where I've used the Tombow water-based marker to blend colors together. I just actually got the whole set of Tombows. And so I've actually been pulling this out and using it a lot more with my Derwent ink tents. So I wanted to show you how that works as well as how the water brush works. So I may try that out in a couple different places on the frog, but the water brush is what I use the most or what I tend to use the most when I'm using the Derwent ink tents. I just feel like it gives me much more control of how much water I'm using or how much water is actually on my brush. Okay, so I did grab a sheet of paper and I'm gonna put this piece of paper behind the page. I just want to make sure it's not going to go through to the other side. I mean, it may go through to this side. I really don't know yet, but I don't want it to go all the way through to this side. At least I can save one page this way. Anytime you're using water-based markers or alcohol markers, always make sure you use a piece of paper. And then another thing you want to do is always make sure you have some kind of napkin or a paper towel where you could clean off your brush in between. Okay, so the way that you go about this when you're using Derwent Ink Tense is you always start with the lightest color and you move out towards the darkest color. And you will see once I activate this, how that color just really starts to pop. But look at that. Is that not the coolest thing ever? Wow. <laughs> I absolutely love these. And then I'm gonna bring this color down into the other colors. And I think this brush might be okay. Pulling that darker color right into the others. And then I need to go over this because I didn't go over it yet. Okay, so I'm gonna clean off my brush. And again, I wanna make sure my brush is not soaking wet. I think actually, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna use the Tombow marker instead because this way y'all can see the difference between what this looks like and what this looks like. So we're gonna use the same method here with the Tombow water-based marker. And we're gonna start in the center and pull the color out. And this actually may give you even more control with your colors than using a water brush. 
You really can't tell a whole lot of difference, but there's a little bit of a difference in the way that it feels. So let me come up here and use this and just pull this color up. Then maybe we could use the Tombow marker down here as well. I'm again starting with my lightest color and pulling it right into my darker color and then I'm gonna pull my darker color down a little bit just to get that good blend. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna wipe off my marker because I've got a lot of lighter color here. And then I'm gonna come all the way into here with this. And I wanna keep this a little bit lighter, so that's why I didn't go all the way into the top of his foot there. Okay, so since I showed in my last video where I showed all the different techniques and the way to activate these, I did show how to do that with an alcohol marker as well. So I'm gonna do one part of this frog with the alcohol marker, and we're gonna see what happens and if it looks any different. So I'm just gonna do the bottom part here of his foot and I'm gonna come in here. Let me make sure that this doesn't have any color on it. So I'm just gonna come down here in the bottom part. Again, I'm gonna start with the lightest color and I'm going to move out to the darkest color. And I will say honestly that I don't as much like the way using an alcohol marker feels I think I prefer either the Tombow water-based or using a water brush or even a brush. Now I'm gonna come back with my brush and I'm gonna do a little bit of his foot here. So I'm just gonna use water and brush and show you how that works. So I'm just gonna come over here where I have the lightest color and pull it into the darker color. So I don't think I even added the darkest color yet over here in this part of his little foot, but I did do the mid-tone green and the mustard. And that brush is probably not thick enough, but let's go ahead and see if I can do this part down here. And I did add a little bit more water this time. And this actually helps to blend in some of that darker color when the tip is a little bit smaller and it doesn't pull it in as far. So when I was using the water brush and it was a little bit more of a bigger tip, it tends to drag the color a little bit more. Okay, so since you all saw that, I'm gonna go back now to my favorite method. <laughs> and that is with my water brush. And we are going to come in here and you could see how much wider this water brush is. I probably should have used the actual brush here in this area. And I think it's okay to use this wider one down in here because we're not gonna have too much of a highlight down underneath here. And then let's go ahead and do this part of his foot or this bottom leg here. Okay, so now this is the part that I really wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how you can come back and you can layer the colors over because when I look at this frog, he does have some depth and dimension, but He's not done, he could look even better. So I'm gonna come back with my darkest color, which is the leaf green. And I'm going to layer right over the top of where I had added that color originally. And look at the difference that makes. Look at all the extra added depth and dimension I just got in there. And you can come back and you can activate that with water, or you could totally leave it alone if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna come back here and add a little bit extra depth and dimension, and I'm gonna speed this part up to music so y'all could just see it come together. Again, just make sure that you're watching how much water you're using and we're gonna start with the lightest and we're gonna move it into the darkest. And look at that sun yellow once it's activated. Oh my, <laughs> is that gorgeous? Okay, so I'm gonna, I went into the darker color just a little bit. Let me get this area over here. Oh wow, that is so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I have all the color off my brush and wiping it off on a napkin off to the side. And again, I'm gonna make sure I don't have a whole lot of water on my brush. Actually, I think I wanna come back in here and just add 
a pop of that sun yellow because that looked so pretty. Now I'm going to start where I laid that color and blend that out into the darkest color. Oh my, look how pretty that is. Come down here and blend all these colors out again right into that darker color and I'm going to be really careful where I'm going over this darker color here. These are like a dream to work with. They honestly are. They're literally like magic. And then I need to brush off my brush one more time. And then I'm going to come down here where I added that lighter color and pull that again into the darker color. And if you saw my previous video, the reason you want to do that is because if you start with the darker color and pull it into your lighter colors, you're going to sort of lose some of that highlight on your coloring pages because it's just going to blend those two colors together and create a different color. And so that sun yellow that I added in there where I wanted to just create that pop of color, it would just blend into the other darker colors and it would take away from that. So I'm just going over my darker colors here in this area and I'm activating them. And then I'm gonna brush off my brush again and I'm gonna come down over here into his foot. Oh wow, look at, I added that sun yellow there. Look how beautiful that is. Look at that color once you activate it. It's like, wow. <laughs> once you activate these, they just get so much darker and so much more vibrant. So I'm gonna come in here and blend some of this out because I did add a lot of this color into here because I would assume a lot less light is getting into here. But look how much darker that just got. But I think he looks like he has a lot more depth and dimension and now he has that extra pop because of the sun yellow. Oh, I love him, he's so cute. Look at those colors. Now, I think I want a little bit, a tad bit of the sun yellow in here. Now, this is still a little bit wet so me adding this color right in here, it's just going to blend right in because it hadn't dried yet. So now let me come over here and grab my oak. I want to see how much more depth I can actually add to this. And this color should be a little bit darker, and it is. Look at that. And I am going in a circular motion. Now the reason you can do this and just continue to layer so many times is because these are permanent once you lay them down and activate them. And so that gives you the ability to come back and lay all these layers. Now this should get darker after I come back and I activate it again. Okay, so I think that's enough of that. Let me go ahead and activate where I laid that color. Now I'm starting to forget where I laid that color. <laughs> Did I lay any down under there? I do want some down under there. Now see, I just wet it with my brush, so if I come in here and just lay the color, it will just lay right down there because the page is a little bit wet, and then I'm just gonna pull it down just a little with my brush. Just like I did before, if I wanted to, I could come back here while it's still wet and just lay that color down. And look how easily it lays down, and it just automatically blends. So that's another way that you could do it if you wanna just wet your book just a little bit. I wouldn't do it a whole lot, but if you want to wet it just a little bit and then go over it with that color, you could totally do that too. And then here I'm just sort of pulling the color upward into those other colors, but I think he looks adorable. I do think I just need to blend a little bit more color in there. And then right down in here, I think I want a pop of this sun yellow. And then I think I need to add just a little bit of the fern right in here just to blend it out a little bit. And my page is still just a little bit wet, so it's just going to sort of blend the colors. And I'm blending it right into that mustard and the areas where that sun yellow was. And do you see how the colors are still blending out? You can come back and just add so many layers. And this coloring book is just wonderful. See again here, I could just continue to blend that color out. So I finished the filming of this entire video and I just couldn't leave this adorable little frog unfinished. I had to come back and color in his crown. So I grabbed the sun yellow and the mustard from the Derwent Ink Tents. I believe I only used two colors here. And then I came back and activated the colors with the Tombow water-based marker. And you can see here that I am layering over it once again. Then I decided to grab my Ohuhu glitter markers, which are absolutely wonderful. And 
color in the few little decorations on his adorable little crown. Then I came back with the stickles to add a pop of glitter and a little bit of depth and dimension. And oh my goodness, I love the way that he turned out. So our adorable little frog is done and I love him. He's so cute. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful and showed you all the different ways you can activate your Derwent ink tents. I know that I did it in the previous video, but I wanted to be able to do it in a coloring book because I think that makes all the difference in the world. And so you can see with some of the areas in the beginning of the video where I did it with the alcohol marker, I did it with the water-based marker, you really can't tell any difference in the way that it actually looks. So visually it looks the same. It will feel differently though to you. You'll have to try out some some of the different methods that I used in this video to activate the Derwent ink tents because you may prefer one over the other one may be easier for you than the other one you may find that you have a little bit more control using your uh, Tombow brush pen if you don't have a Tombow brush pen and you want to try to use that you can actually buy these open stock so you can just buy one open stock of this to try it and see how you like it but unfortunately with the ohuhu or the alcohol based markers you're not going to be able to get a colorless blender unless you are purchasing a whole set but I can honestly say that I don't prefer the alcohol blender and using it on my coloring pages I really prefer either the water brush or the Tombow water-based blender either one of those are going to help you to control the amount of water that you're laying down onto your coloring page and of course when you're using using these in your coloring books, it's very important because you definitely want to be able to control that amount of water. So even if you're using a regular brush, make sure that you don't saturate it before you put it on your coloring page. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Everything that you see me use in this video will be in the description box below. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.